What is going on guys, Pat in the shop, and tonight I'm answering your rotating assembly questions on our quest for 500 horsepower. We're talking Dingle Ball 2.0. This is our 479 horsepower, 355, and ways that we can make it better. Let's check it out. So after going through a lot of comments, I seem to get recurring questions and comments, and it seems like when Dealing with small block Chevys, everyone and their uncle wants to build between a 400 and a 500 horsepower. A lot of guys have this 500 horsepower goal in mind. Uh, considering with the Dingle Ball 2.0, the Dingle Ball 1.0, we did uh, 480 horsepower. This one made 450 foot pounds of torque uh, on you know a relatively small budget. Uh, but everybody wants to break you know or get right close or even beat 500 horsepower. Uh, so I get questions a lot. What if we do aluminum heads? What if we do this? What if we do that? So I thought I would talk the opportunity or take the opportunity as we're explaining the parts we use on the Dinkle Bolt 2.0, what we can do to make the engine better and help you guys while you're building your engines at home. In the last video, we were talking the blocks and I recommended, uh, you know, a late model one piece remain seal block. Again, an upgrade from what we used, in my opinion, on the Dingle Ball 2.0, which we used a two-piece rear main seal block where we have to use retrofit uh, roller system, uh, system and stuff like that for the camshaft, where the later blocks we can get away with the OE roller um, setup. So right now we're going to be uh, using a one-piece rear main seal block 638, but let's talk tonight about the rotating assembly and some of the questions that we get asked or I get asked about uh, what to use in this engine when we're trying to build uh, a decent motor. The first thing I wanna talk about though, uh, and I got a comment a lot on the last video was, what is the budget? I said, we're gonna do this on a budget. And I didn't really say a budget because the reality is, is I don't have a budget for this build. I'm not trying to build an engine as cheap as possible uh, because with the other engines, a lot of these YouTube engines you guys see, I'm utilizing parts I already have, but that doesn't mean they're the perfect parts to use. So when we're putting together a combination and you guys are having to buy all these parts, not everyone uh, has a collection of small block Chevy parts like I have. Uh, so you guys are out there buying new parts. Um, so not all, you know, I don't need to copy this if we can buy something better. So that's kind of what this is all about. So the first thing uh, I want to get into, and uh, a lot of guys asked when I did the 355, is why didn't I build it a 383? So the first question is 355 or 383? Uh, when in doubt, stroke it out, all right? Uh, if you're buying everything new, it's not that much more money to do a 383. Uh, you know, some old school guys will tell you the 355 or the 327s are better in some way. Uh, I have never experienced that. When you build a street motor and you're trying to build something fun, street light to street light, that extra torque you're gonna pick up. So if we if we were to figure out that we're gonna have an extra um, 28 uh, cubic inches over our 355 here, uh, th that would easily be 35 foot pounds of torque and probably about 38 horsepower without doing anything else, theoretically. So. And, and the, the the average torque throughout the pole will be quite a bit better. So when in doubt, always do a 383. Uh, on on this setup, I didn't because I already had the the rods and pistons, and I got the crank really cheap. So that really kind of just made sense at the time. But if I was starting from nothing, I would be doing a 383. Uh, next question is, and that I guess I should get into that, and that's what we're going to be doing. So. Answer, so I, when I answer these questions and I, and I give you the answers, that's what we're going to be building. We're actually going to be doing three 383s uh, strokers. So keep that in mind. So next question is when buying a kit, a uh, rotating assembly, cast or forged crankshaft? Um, at this horsepower level, a cast crank is going to be absolutely fine. The Dingle Ball 2.0 has an Eagle uh, cast crank. Uh, the stroker cranks are definitely a better buy than having a 400 crank ground down because that's what it that's what how it originally started 383 stroker is it's the stroke of a 400 small block and a 30 over bore of a 350. Uh, buying a stroker kit, you buy the full Eagle rotating kit, and I'll give you the part number of what we're going to use when we get to that point. Um, 
you buy the full balance rota rotating kit uh, because you need the matching pistons, you need the rods, and it comes with bearings, uh, oftentimes a flex plate, sometimes a damper. It gives you the full kit and buy it balanced. Uh, most of the time, the balance jobs are, are, are decent. And okay, next question, uh, connecting rods. Um, factory connecting rods, uh, you know, if you're building a 355, I recommend again the 383, but if you're building a 355, on the Dingleball 2.0, we used a factory forged connecting rod. Do I recommend this? No, is it fine at this horsepower level? Yes, but the reason I don't recommend it is I will search through many sets of rods that I have to find good eight rods that I like, then try to um, match them with weight and balancing them, uh, and it's just a pain. Honestly, the amount of time I spend, um, you can even see this one. If you look here where the pin goes, it's offset. Uh, and by the time you add ARP rod bolts and have them resized, they're just not worth the time. I don't even bother too much anymore unless I really, you know, think I have a good set there. So I don't, I, I don't recommend it to you guys because you're going to spend a lot of time messing around and you're not going to really save that much money if you don't already have them. Uh, that's the, the early rods. The later rods uh, are these ones. These are what we call powdered metal rods. These came in the Vortec motors. These things are, are pretty strong. I've used these in supercharged engines uh, and they, they always hold up really good. But again, um, you, if you find a set of these, what's cool about them actually is they're almost, the weight will be within a couple grams of each other. They're very consistent. The pin bores are always this, this uh, consistent. Um, you should always have them resized. I find oftentimes they're out or round and need to be resized, but I always upgrade them with ARP bolts. But again, by the time you do that with machine shop prices, uh, you upgrade them uh, with ARP bolts, have them resized. If you're going to a floating pin, you got to do something with, have that, you know, have that honed out. It's just not worth the time. They are pretty good rods, but honestly, they're not worth the time. You can identify them with the, the, the round tops. There's no balance pad in the, in the fairly smooth bottoms uh, over the, the stock or original uh, factory small block Chevy rods. Um, this is what you're gonna get in an Eagle stroker kit. Uh, this is an I-beam rod over an H-beam rod. That's an H-beam rod. This is real heavy duty application. Most guys are not gonna need this. This is if you're gonna be running lots of boost uh, or um, nitrous, uh, you know, even high RPM. A lot of guys won't use these for higher RPM stuff uh, just because they're heavy. They are very strong, 4340, uh, 716s rod bolts. These, this is a strong rod, but really not necessary for that 500 horsepower mark. Uh, this is what you're going to get in the stroker kit. This is a 5140 uh, steel uh, 5.7 stroker rod. So that's another benefit when we're going to the stroker kits. They'll come with a stroker rod. And the difference between that uh, is these have through bolts. As you can see here, it's not pressed in all the way. But see that through bolt? See how this has just a regular cap bolt? So these Eagle rods come with ARP cap bolts. And, and stroker clearance here. And the reason you want that is what can happen is the, the, the rod can hit the camshaft with the, in a stroker uh, application because now you're moving that rod further up uh, and it can actually come in contact with a big, especially if you're using a big like hydraulic roller cam, and then you'll end up with clearance issues. Under 6,500 RPM, a 500 horsepower, a 3 8 ARP rod bolt is gonna be just fine. We have never had any issues with these. Uh, if you wanted to go to a more heavy duty I-beam rod, uh, like a the different steel, like a 4340 I-beam rod with 716 bolts, it's not a bad idea, uh, just not necessary, again, at this power level. So these 5140 Eagle rods will be just fine. Never had an issue uh, with those. All right, another thing that seems to stress people out is a 5'7 rod, 5'7 inch rod versus a 6 inch rod that I got over here. Um, this 
is something you'll see on the internet a lot and guys guys really get bent out of shape about it um the five seven rod will be just fine and if you wanted to go to a six inch rod will it oftentimes make a little bit more power yes uh do you have a better rod ratio yes will it cause slightly less worse wear on the cylinder because of the rod ratio maybe um but the 5.7 rod, the 5.7 inch rod is going to be just fine. And here's the big advantage. When we're trying to do this on a budget, most of these rotating assembly kits are going to come with a 5.7 inch rod. If you go to a 6 inch rod, especially for you novice engine builders, this is the longer 6 inch rod. What some of you guys might not like is what happens when the rod gets longer, the piston has to get shorter, okay? So you get a shorter skirt piston, uh, and what happens is the pin of the the rod, uh, the piston, has to move up into this ring land uh, for the, the oil ring. So you have to put in these rail supports. It's a little bit more uh, work, I guess, uh, and just being careful putting things together uh, because you have to make sure uh that this goes together properly with that rail support or you're going to have some major problems so going to a six inch rod is never a bad thing uh but oftentimes it's just a little bit more finesse work and a little bit more money so just just keep that in mind the 5.7 inch rod is going to be just fine you don't have to worry about going into that uh that oil rail or anything like that so for our budget build budget build we're going to be running a 5.7 inch rod Pistons, a uh, question I get too quite a bit is do I need to go to a forged piston or a uh, cast piston hyper eutectic? Cast piston you're not going to see really, uh, that's maybe in some stock replacement stuff, old stuff, but most replacement pistons that are not forged are what we call hyper eutectic, which is typically or technically a cast piston. Uh, they're just, they're, they're a better alloy and they're stronger. Uh, cast or hyper eutectic pistons are great. Uh, at this horsepower level, again, they'll be just fine. I've run uh, hyper eutectic pistons at 700 horsepower. I uh, never had a problem. They're obviously not recommended at that, but at a 500 horsepower level, no problem. The LS guys, they're running hyper eutectic pistons with boost and they just add ring, cap, ring gap up to a thousand horsepower. And those are the factory hyper, hyper eutectic pistons. So uh, just like crankshafts or anything else, if the tune-up's good, uh, if you have enough ring gap, which is really important, I think hyper eutectic pistons get a bit bad rap because guys don't run enough ring gap. Always follow the manufacturer's ring gap recommendation because this piston right here, this is a claimer like Keith Black piston. Uh, they had different ring gap. They always called for more ring gap. So if a guy was putting an uh, engine together and just did the old four thou per inch ring gap, it's not enough for these pistons. They get they take the heat in, the heat transfers into the ring, the expansion of the ring ends up, it butts together, breaks the top of the piston off, they get a bad rap. Everyone says hypertech pistons are weak. They're not weak, they just didn't have enough ring gap because you didn't follow the instructions. So Always follow the manufacturer's recommendation for ring gap. I also recommend uh, talking to your machinist. I like to put a little extra clearance, piss in the wall clearance on these, a half a thou to one thou more than what's recommended if I plan on beating on these things. The nice part is they go in tighter than a forged piston, so they're not as noisy when they're cold compared to a forged piston. This is a forged piston right here. What you're going to find is they're going to be lighter because they can be they can be put together uh, a little bit less robust because the actual material is stronger than a hyper eutectic piston. Um, if you're planning on running boost or nitrous or anything like that, it's not a bad idea to go to a, a forged piston, but if you're just doing a street strip uh, NA build like we're going for, a forged piston is not necessary and uh, it's just an added expense. They have to. Um, I wanted to show you something though. When I ordered this Eagle kit that, this, that these pistons came with, I was told they had a, like the listing showed it was a D-shaped uh, piston. So you see with this, with this piston right here, how it has a D-shaped dish, or sorry, a dish in it. I was hoping it was a D-shape, which looks a little bit more like this one. This is a real heavy duty um, blower piston and rod. When it comes up to the head, this area, uh, 
is your quench area and it'll uh, it pushes it pushes the the charge into the actual combustion chamber which i prefer um so when i got these pistons i wasn't too happy about that they're going to be fine you still get a little bit of this quench pad here which is all right but ideally i would have liked that section filled in and just had it um just had the dish uh, the reason we have to go to a dish piston when we're going to a 383 stroker if we're trying to get the same compression ratio as our dingle ball um, 2.0 which is around 10 to 1 uh, as you increase your displacement your compression ratio goes up so on the dingle ball we had uh, to cut the chambers down and use a flat top piston something similar to this forge piston and that gave us around 10 10 to 1 but if we were to use that same flat top piston uh, in in the in the 383 version, we'd have over 11 to one compression. So we have to go to a dish piston. This is a 12 cc, I believe, dish piston. Uh, and that dish piston mixed with a 64 cc head uh, which should give us a right around 10 to one compression. So that's what we're gonna be dealing with. Again, hyperutectic piston will be just fine uh, in our application. And the nice part about a lot of these newer rotating assemblies, and this is a little bonus, is they're coming with metric rings. They're not super small, they're the 1.5, 1.5, three mil ring set. Uh, this is a nice little advantage. So if you're looking at buying a rotating assembly, uh, again, when, we, when I have everything picked out, uh, I will be posting what rotating assembly I'm, uh, we're using in the part numbers, but they'll come with these metric rings. Uh, it's a little bit of a horsepower improvement. These aren't super skinny. You can get up to like one millimeter rings. Uh, but obviously the disadvantage to that can be excessive blow by and, and uh, things along that nature. Uh, but the 1.5 millimeter, which is a, a little bit smaller than uh, a 564th big heavy ring. And that's actually what we used on the Dingle Ball 2.0, which is the big old school ring. So these, these definitely have an advantage over that. Uh, and th again, this is a ring set that comes with an Eagle kit, uh, Hastings rings, perfectly fine. We don't have to go to a fancy total seal ring. We're not going to see the real benefit of that at this horsepower level. Uh, and uh, this is just like uh, your regular Molly coated rings. Just perfect, perfect for what we're doing. So with all that babbling, I hope you guys got some information out of this video. When we're comparing our new 383 that we're building, and we're actually, like I said, we're going to be doing three 383s. When we're comparing those to our Dingle Ball 2.0, really similar. We're going to be using this, a cast crank like we did here. We're going to be using hyperutectic pistons. And we're going to be using a forged rod. We're just going to be going to an aftermarket forged rod, forged rod rather than trying to you know, find a good set of um, stock GM rods. The biggest difference is going to that bigger stroke from our 348 stroke on here to the 383, 375 stroke that we're gonna be going to. That's gonna be the big difference. And you know, even just that upgrade alone on our, um, this this uh, Dingle Ball 2.0, if this was a 383, we already, we already technically would be pushing that 500 horsepower mark. But nonetheless, we're gonna keep continuing on. We have our block picked. We have our basic rotating assembly. I'll give you part numbers when we get to that point uh, for things like that. So everything we use on these upcoming, this upcoming 383, I'll give you part numbers. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, please comment below. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button uh, and that like button. And I appreciate you guys. I'll see you on the next one.